And next, please welcome Renee Owens, who will be talking about falling open on and off the page. Hi, I'd like to welcome all of you to Gallery Route One's Falling Open on and off the page, an exhibition of book art and book related objects. As a book and fiber artist myself, I was delighted to be invited by Groves, C. Morbitz, and Mary Eubank to curate this exhibit and to work with the project space themes of immigration, social justice, the environment, and the pandemic. An appealing challenge for the invited artist who unfurled their imaginations to create a range of work, which you will see, both large and small, that immerses us in the landscape we're now navigating. And here at the entrance to the, to the gallery, we encounter Tim Graveson's unearthed architectural relics, which stand sentry over the exhibit like a guardian of lost books. Tim's skill at working with and photographing large objects assisted not just in creating this moving piece, but also in much of the behind the scenes work on the gallery floor. Now we have Pamela Blotner's albatross sculpture, which gazes urgently out at us, conveying a cautionary tale, referencing the rhyme of the ancient mariner in an ode to the vanishing species on our planet. And Teddy Builder's pieces speak to immigration with her border relic sculpture inspired by pipe organ cactus, which references the porous passageway at the border and honors those who didn't make it across. Along with her 17 foot wall constructions, with its palimpsest of photographs of Oaxacan walls on handmade paper, hinged with rusty barbed wire and subtle embroidery stitches, delicate as skin. Next, we have Merka Naster's seven-foot installation, Journeys into Unknown Territory, which pulls us in for a deeper look, its panorama of wandering threads, creating a topography and a calming respite in our search for a safe haven. And then Inez Storer's haunting piece, Definition, highlights a small German dictionary which her Jewish mother had when she got out of Hitler's Berlin in the 30s. It honors many of her relatives who did not make it out. Nearby, her painting, The Good and the Terrible, looks on, showcasing Inez's iconic, playful use of color and spirited handwriting lying a deeper, potent message. And Kathleen Edwards' densely in inked skeleton, an accordion book titled Shelter in Place, a colorful talisman in the face of daily pandemic death counts and crashing economies. And then a trio of artists, including again Kathleen Edwards and Paula Gray and Susan Gross, collaborated to create the accordion book Tree of Life 
to find inspiration and solace during the pandemic, they mailed the book and several others back and forth to each other from California to Vashon Island, Washington. Their use of bright colors and animals is their testament to the restorative processes at work in the natural world. Susan Zimmerman has pieced together images of 1900-era steamship tickets on vellum, inked with her drawings along the bottom, to immerse us in the world of her grandmother, who at 17 stole a ticket to immigrate from Eastern Europe to Ellis Island. This piece provides a visual record of her hope. with drawings and text in a repurposed metal grid to speak of the containment of our many months of quarantine during the pandemic. Next we have Sherry Lovler's book, Marking Time, Coptic Bound. It contains her own daily pandemic practice a diptych per day of incredibly detailed and vivid abstract calligraphic paintings. And Linda McDonald's two books, an intimate record of our natural environment, an urban encroachment into the wild, with Linda's sketches transforming into rich seeds for her expressive larger works. Jamie Tabak utilizes her print and box making expertise to capture images of cell structures that address climate change and the virus in her piece titled Pandemic's Box. And then Mirka Naster's accordion book, Cup of Tea, constructed of flattened tea bags, speaks to the difficulties she and her parents encountered in their immigration to America, suggesting we offer sustenance to travelers across our borders instead of rejection. And then entering the contained space on the left side of the center gallery, we're immediately drawn to explore another of Jane Ingram Allen's handmade paper sculptures this one, titled Stacks, Swirls and Sways in the Current, offering rich shadows on the wall and conjuring up boats to escape in. Cheryl Files' evocative in ink and printmaking become partners in her piece titled Tilt, conjuring up language roots from past civilizations for an alchemical message of healing for our planet. Rachel Lawfer's seemingly whimsical mobile of blue plant cyanotypes reveals a darker message inside with its title, Silent Spring, an inner text, taken from Carson's seminal book in the 60s on the dangers of DDT. Master teacher and bookmaker Rhiannon Alfer's work shapes content, form, and materials into narrative story. Like the book Tracing Outlines, taking a look at climate change and loss of land mass and the deep indigo night of her beautiful book whispering stones handwriting peeking out an incredibly personal evocation of her own isolation and grief during the pandemic on the wall Printmaker Lynn Dillon's voice is recognizable for its imaginative use 
of typographical elements, creating a metaphorical representation of the chaos of our times, both its pain and its beauty, alluded to in the titles which reference incurable sadness and nothing lasts forever. The large canvas mural on the back wall, Jamie Tabak's piece, handwritten Bill of Rights. It resurrects a faded version of the American flag, stars partially hidden with its meaning inherent in the contrast of the inked amendments and the international custom of hanging a flag upside down to signify a country in distress. A side table displays intimate work that invites us to lean in and linger, like another book of Jamie Tabax titled Aquifers and Spirit Rocks, which displays her mastery utilizing color and line to create a dynamic vocabulary of contaminated water and global loss. And then my own hanging piece titled Sheltering is a folding accordion book combining gestural calligraphy of original poetry about the pandemic with fragments of vintage books and boxes like artifacts embodying the Japanese spirit of Mono no Aware, a reference for all that is impermanent in our lives. And finally, we end with Louise Pryor's work. As a fifth generation California farmer, she has a keen awareness of the land. She enchants us with another of her seated rag doll like figures. This one created from repurposed clothing and an old atlas stuffed with pennies for ballast, titled The World Reads Itself and Weeps. Her invitation for all of us to sit with compassion with the joy and suffering of our complex lives. Thank you to Gallery Route One for hosting this exhibit and for their ever-present role in bringing art to our community. And thanks to all of the artists whose work offers such incredible creativity and beauty to enrich all of our lives during this challenging time. Please do remember to visit the gallery exhibits online and also plan a trip out to the gallery to see all three of the exhibits here live. The gallery is open Thursday to Sunday from 11 to 5 by appointment or for drop-in. We hope to see you here. Thank you so much. Bye now.